Because the Telecommunications Board of Northern Kentucky requires all programs to have educational content, we proudly present this totally rad and dope documentary on historical events of the 1970s. Pornography. Whether you're an avid fan, a casual viewer, or you claim that it's one of the great cultural evils to cover for the fact that you watch more of it than both combined, the cultural and economic impact of pornography is undeniable. It facilitated every technological advancement in the history of home entertainment. A pornographic film lent its namesake to one of the most important figures in one of the most important political scandals in American history. And nowadays, more money is spent on pornography than country music, video games, and baby food combined. But there was a time in the 1970s when the very future of the industry was at risk. I guess you could say that I'm kind of an insider in the porn biz. My job is simple but crucial. I come up with the titles for the movies. The Sperminator? That was me. My big fat Greek dong? This guy. Goodwill Humping? Oh yeah. <laughs> Times are good. But they weren't always good. In 1974, William Wankspear and many others in his line of work felt they weren't fairly compensated for their work. Studio executives balked at their demands for higher wages. They told us we were being ridiculous. They said, you don't deserve a million dollars a year just to come up with titles. Or, all you do is make corny sex puns out of existing movie titles. Or, any mouth-breathing moron with a rhyming dictionary and a dirty mind could do what you do. That, my friend, is bullpucky. Bullpucky, I tell you! You think you can do what I do? Let me tell you a story. I once spent... It must have been six months meditating in a Buddhist monastery. As I felt all of the cosmic knowledge that the universe has to offer wash over me like a cleansing flood, a title suddenly came to me in a dream, and City of Annals was born. I will not accept being told that I am anything less than a f***ing genius. William united with other professional porn titlers to go on strike. Their flair for humorously naughty titles carried over to the name of their organization, the Pornography Entertainment Namers International Strike. They thought they could survive without us. They didn't realize how truly important we are. The movies themselves, you're only going to watch it for five minutes, and in the end it's all the same stuff. The people, the setting, and the number of midgets may change, but at the end of the day, it's all the same. The title is where you make the sale. When someone sees a truly great title like Broke Black Mountain, they buy. When they see a lame title like uh, Desperate Black Wives, they'll keep on walking and get their interracial kicks elsewhere. The effect of the strike was immediate and devastating. Studios scrambled to hire scab writers, and after a wave of poorly titled releases, such as The World According to Poop, Ball the Pretty Horses, Sex Jurassic Park, and Ghostbusters, only instead of busting ghosts, it's people doing it instead, sales tumbled dramatically. With studios facing financial ruin, they caved to demands. William Wankspear had won the day. I didn't go on strike out of greed. I did it because I have a family to feed. I have two boys. I named them after presidents because I want them to grow up to do great things. I wanted to make sure that my oldest, George Flushington, would always be provided for. And I wanted to make sure that my youngest, Log Jammin' Harrison, would get the college education I never had. That's why I did it. That's why. And so the pornography business marched on, continuing to turn massive profits, change the world, and cause blindness in a whole new generation of Americans. Warning, the sketch you just watched was about pornography. If you have any small children with you, you should have changed the channel. 
Gentlemen, we have a problem. Although A1 is still the number one steak sauce in the country, our sales are stagnant. This is the first quarter in my 30 years of running this company that we've seen no growth in revenue. Thomas, I hired you as my vice president for a reason. How can we change this? I'm way ahead of you, sir. I think we need to take our marketing in a new and exciting direction. I like it. If we don't change things fast, I think we'll be in serious danger of people actually enjoying the flavor of steak. Oh my god! The recession has hit us hard. People are starting to cut corners when it comes to steak sauce. They're thinking, this seasoned extremely fatty steak is good enough. Maybe I don't need a bottle of A1. Maybe this already tastes pretty good and I don't have to dump enough liquid salt on it to kill a horse before I can enjoy it. It's like you're describing my worst nightmares in perfect horrifying detail. I've brought in an external marketing consultant to offer his input. Well, let's hear from him. Thank you, sir. Okay, I have a question for all of you. What is the most important attribute that a product needs to be a big hit? Is it cool packaging? No, it's sex appeal. Maybe it's a combination of the two. What if the inside of the packaging has a coupon for a free happy ending? The best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. You two are close, but that's not quite it. What is it then? Name recognition. Oh! A1 is well known, but it's been seen so many times that we've gotten too used to it. You need a new name. What do you have in mind? We need a modern name. A relevant name that's on everyone's mind. Gentlemen, I have a proposal. We take the name A1, modify it slightly, and it becomes... H1N1. Oh dear god. You've gotta be kidding me. Are you serious? This is unbelievable. I agree. I can't believe how amazingly perfect the idea is. Swine flu! Why didn't I think of that? It's a name nobody would forget. They say it 50 times a day on the news. It's like free advertising. Julia, get me the marketing division. Yes, hello? This is your boss. I'm just here to deliver a friendly message. You're all f***ing fired! We just hired Tom Brokaw to do our marketing for free. And don't forget the H1N1 is swine flu, which makes the consumer think about pigs. We've been trying to get people to use our sauce on pork for years. You guys know what? I think this new marketing campaign will be really in fluential. <laughs> 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 <laughs>